the requirements, departments, scholarships, uh, career destinations, and then we'll take Q&A. Over to you, Neharika. Thank you, Ranbir. So, hi, everyone. I am Neharika, and I'm the recruitment advisor for Royal Holloway University, and I'm based in Mumbai. So um, I'll just share my screen. So we'll run through a very short presentation. And we'll try to keep it as interactive after the presentation's done. So um, this is the Royal Holloway campus. And uh, this is uh, the two of us in India representing the university. So there is Karan Shaukeen, who's the senior recruitment advisor and he's based in Delhi and I am in Mumbai. Just to kind of scroll through, these are some information regarding the COVID-19 and college measures that we have undertaken. I'm not going to spend too much time, but if you all have your computer phones ready, you all can use this uh, QR co uh, code to scan and find all the information uh, for the same. <laughs> uh, coming to our uh, programs, we have uh, all undergraduate, postgraduate, and foundation programs. Now, our undergraduate programs are usually done via UCAS, and uh, the postgraduate and our foundation programs are done directly and through study group. So all the links are over here, and your counselors at Combined Company can help you out with that. So just to give you, like, I'm just going to be skimming through this because this is more for the counselors. This is the portal where you kind of put in your application. And this is how the application uh, portal will take you to once you put in, uh, once you log in, um, you put in an application for a postgraduate program. And basically we go through the entire application form. Once you submit, generally students have a student ID and that will help us look for your, uh, your applications and track if you want us to kind of, uh, if you want us to find out more information regarding your application status. Um, this is not necessary, so I'm going to skip through this part. Uh, now, coming to the application process and the deadline for, um, we have a deadline uh, for our postgraduate applications. Uh, which is 1st of June. Now, this is not a hard deadline because we do understand that students in India do have delayed results. So if at all you have applications after 1st of June, please feel free to go ahead and apply. Just let Karan or me know about the application that is being sent through so that we can prioritize on those applications. We do not have any application fees to apply, so it's an easy streamlined process. Now, uh, with regards to our postgraduate entry requirements, we follow the National Institution Ranking Framework, and we have three categories of our entry requirements. So the two is to two, two is to one, and UK first class are how we assess our applications. The two is to two is a 55% equivalent or a 5.5 CGP on 10. Now, when we put in an application for a student with a 55%, we do not assure you any scholarships. Um, so for the minimum scholarship requirement, we require a two is to one, which is a 60% in Indian equivalency or a 6.0 on 10 CGPA. And for a higher range of scholarships, we need a bachelor's degree with an overall of 65% or a CGP of 6.5. Now, the reason that why we've kind of categorized this in uh, such a format is to kind of shed more clarity on the scholarship requirements because we do have like a whole range of scholarships for international students, but this will just be very clear as to where the student stands in terms of scholarship. A great USP for Royal Holloway is that we do not re really require an IELTS or a TOEFL or a PTE. Uh, as long as the student has scored 70% uh, in year 12 of English or can provide with a medium of instruction, um, at the time of application, we would not request you for an IELTS or a PTE or a TOEFL. 
Now, we do have some new courses uh, that we are introducing for September 2022. Uh, we have introduced a whole new department for health studies and an additional cybersecurity option. So if you go through these courses, these are the ones that we offer for September 2022. Um, so the MSc in Applied Neuroscience, the MSc in Food Security, Sustainability and Biodiversity, the MA in Global Health in Society, Culture and Behavior, and we have a similar program, MSc in Global Health for Human Health and Environment, and a cyber MSc in Cybersecurity Project Management. These are all being offered for us September 2022 uh, intake so we have realized that there is a growing trend for health courses so this is not exactly a public health program it focuses more uh, mainly on uh, you know the health uh, issues at a global level so we kind of realized the emergency of these programs post the pandemic so we think that this would be a good idea to pitch into students so if any students would like to kind of apply for these programs, we are on for September. Just to give you some um, facts and figures of Royal Holloway, we are in the top 25 universities in the UK and in the, to uh, in the top 25% for research. We have around over 300 universe uh, courses at our university at both the undergraduate, postgraduate, and the foundation programs. So students can choose from their uh, interest of the course that they would like to put in. This come with an industry and business year. So students can get the work experience while they are on their student visa. So that's a great uh, option that we offer for our students. We are located in Egg Hill, which is in the Surrey district, and we are less than 40 minutes to central London. So we're just on the outskirts and we are about seven miles from the Heathrow airport. So uh, the travel to and fro from the city or to the airport isn't like a painstaking job. It's very accessible and students can choose any day. It can be an impromptu plan to visit the city and back. We are a very cultural community and we have around 20% of international students coming from 125 countries. Uh, we have a whole range of scholarships. We offer over 3.6 million pounds for international scholarships, which I will speak to you at length in uh, the slides that follow. We have a great employability rate where 79% of our graduates are employed within 15 months after graduation. Um, we are also located very closely to the M4 corridor hub, which is also known as uh, England Silicon Valley. So a lot of our graduates basically get uh, this uh, cluster of five of over 300 uh, blue chip multinational companies. We have a lot of active student run clubs and communities. So if you want to kind of um, rejuvenate yourself by being a part of the clubs and community. It's just to give you like a snapshot of our map of where Royal Holloway is located. So we are in Eggham and if you can see, we are really close to the Heathrow Airport as well as Central London. We do have a London campus as well where uh, we do uh, offer some business programs. I will get to that in uh, a while. And we are also very closely located to the other countryside of London uh, of the UK as well. So students can plan uh, picnics or trips as and when they'd like to. Just to give you a pre like a snapshot of the Eggham campus, you can see that we have. Uh, the Windsor Castle, which is very close by to London, we have a lot of wildlife. Uh, where students can see animals at a close proximity. We are very close to River Thames, so you all can always opt for a boat ride. There are beautiful waterfalls, and it's a scenic beauty. An aerial snapshot of our university. So we are 135 acres of campus, and we are constantly upgrading ourselves. So the 
buildings that are marked in purple. basically cutting down on a lot of travel expenses if you choose to stay on campus with us and we are completely equipped so there is a bank we have uh, we have car parks we have uh, a lot of restaurants we have Tesco which is basically a supermarket where you are equipped with all kinds of items and products required um, we are a very hands-on and a self-sufficient campus. Some more um, pictures of the university. So we are a red brick stone uh, university. We have a beautiful chapel, which is on the left-hand side of the screen. Um, we have a huge choir, uh, choir uh, where students are found practicing. If any of you are in music or are interested in music, you all must join this place. You all can hear the sounds that echo for a long, long time. So it's very soothing to the ears as well. Um, we are a very safe university. We have been voted as one of the safest universities in uh, the UK, and it's also a scenic attraction. So we are among the top 10 most attractive campuses. year of 1886 by Sir Thomas Holloway. It was eventually given the royal status by Queen Victoria. And finally, we come under the University of London Associations, where we have a cluster of other universities, and that makes our university automatically more prestigious. We are the only campus-based University of London um, camp, uh, college in the uh, in, in in the uk now um, we recently spent around 57 million pounds on um in building so this is a very state-of-art building so royal holloway will provide you with um the best of both where you can get the feels of the traditional university the way it was founded and a building over here which will provide you with all the state of art facilities so we are equipped with a student service center there is a very dedicated careers and employability service that sits in this building and students can avail their offers i will speak about the services that they uh, offer in a while we have a we have a fully functional library. There are IT resources and support. Students basically study over here. There are lecture rooms, there are study rooms, there are group spaces where you can study. There's a research room. There's a lot of cafes, so you can just pick up whatever you want to kind of munch on while you're studying, and you can just sit and you can enjoy. So if you see uh, the picture at the bottom right, you'll see the building, and just when you cross the road, you'll be transported back into the the the. Uh, the traditional university uh, life. We have a great sports center, which was recently refurbished in 2018. And we do understand that, you know, people in the UK and people who come and join us are sports enthusiasts. So we have, we are situated in the main campus and we have a 60 station fitness center. There's an aerobic center. There are a variety of outdoor courts. So students can practice any sport of their choice. Um, this is something that we, uh, uh, you know, are very proud of. And to move on to the clubs and societies, we have over 110 clubs and societies for every interest and hobby or passion that students come bearing with them. So we do have an Indian club where, you know, we celebrate all the festivals, be it Diwali, Holi, uh, we celebrate Eid, we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate a lot of festivals on campus. We have the Bhangra, there is uh, the Harry Potter Society, uh, Society. There are like there is a book club where, stu where bookworms can basically form. Now, this is the careers and graduate immigration route, which most students are very, very interested in. Now, what we do is that we have a graduate immigration route, which uh, allows students to 
work after two years of studying. Um, a lot of our courses, like I had already mentioned, come with a one year of uh, business or industry where the students then get to study for two years and invariably they kind of extend their program to uh, their work visa for two years. So effectively they are staying in the UK for four years. Uh, however, the kind of support that we provide for our students are one-on-one -on -one career counseling uh, sessions. There are career fairs where companies come on campus, interact with students. They uh, are very keen for recruiting them. We have employer workshops. There are you know, placements. There are mentor schemes. We have over 1,000 plus employment opportunities on campus each year. And the best part about these services are that once you still avail the services from the employability service for another two years after you finish your graduation. So it's not like, you know, we cut our ties with our students once you graduate. So at any point of time, if you feel that you'd like to kind of upgrade or change your career and you need that help for the connections, you can definitely reach out to our team again. Um, this is just a very brief uh, process on how the post-study work visa basically works. So we stress on the course completion. Once your course is completed, the Royal Holloway University checks whether you've completed the course and this is sent to the home office. Once they verify your course completion, the university will then report to you and you can then apply for the post-study work visa. The entire process will take three to four weeks. It sounds tedious or it looks tedious over here with the multiple steps, but trust me, this is a very streamlined and a smooth process. It takes less than a month in most cases, but the maximum that it will take for you is about a month. Now, the support and the welfare that Royal Holloway University offers are a smaller class size. We are a mid-sized university where uh, our classrooms are automatically smaller in size. So the advantage is that professors are able to pay more attention to the queries that students bring with them. Students also feel very comfortable about asking questions. There is more interaction. There is more bonding. There is more um, uh, participation in the class. and the academics and the lecturers are really helpful at all points of time. There is a personal tutor if you feel that you are struggling with a certain component or a certain section of your course, you will be assigned a tutor who can help you. We have a peer guide scheme where you will be assigned a peer and you all can work together, you can study together. There is a student welfare center where students with psychological uh, issues can also kind of reach out. So there is a lot of support in those uh, areas. There is a very active international student support with regards to finances and visa, which is sitting on in our main campus. So students can always go and ask them queries at whatever point of time that they want. We have a center for development of academic skills where students can basically um, you know, brush their interpersonal skills and become more professional so that it becomes easier for them to kind of transition into the job market once they finish their graduation. And finally, we do have a very in extensive uh, accommodation and I will be talking about that in uh, a couple of slides further. Now, uh, broadly to speak, we have six faculties or six schools and these are the schools that we offer. So there is the business in management. We have the School for Engineering, Physical and Mathematical Sciences. There is the School of Humanities. We have the School of Law and Social Science. There is the School of Life Sciences and Environment and the School for Performing and Digital Arts. Now, these are categories under which we have a whole range of subjects and programs that we offer. We have around 300 plus programs, but I'll just talk about the popular ones. So uh, our business and management programs consist of the Masters of International Management or the Masters of International Management with a specialization in marketing. We have um, the Masters of uh, the MSc in Finance, MA in Digital Marketing, M MSc in Marketing. We have, uh, we do not have an MBA program, unfortunately, but 
the MSc in International Management works as an MBA just as fine. We don't need work experience. We just need you to come from a relevant background and we will assess. So we have like a whole range of programs at the management and business uh, school. Our computer science uh, programs come under the mathematical sciences. So we offer programs in data science and analytics. We offer uh, the MSc in artificial intelligence and machine learning. We are very popular for our masters in information security. Now these programs come with a year in industry. So students who would want to kind of uh, internship that they do, uh, they are usually paid and they are graded and assessed by the university and it still falls under your student visa. So once you finish the two years, you can then go ahead and extend your visa to the post study work visa. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so we have like a whole range of other uh, programs also, which are all available on the website. Um, I'll be very happy to kind of um, answer questions if there is any particular program that you're looking at, but I'm just uh, speaking of our popular programs over here. This is just as an FYI uh, for uh, undergraduate students. So we have a Russell Square International College, which is based in Mumbai, and we offer four business programs over here. So students who would want to kind of transfer into the Royal Holloway uh, Egham campus, can do so only if they are a part of this uh, college under us uh, under uh, Royal Holloway. But this is just for you guys to know. Now for an accommodation, we have accommodations at both the undergraduate and postgraduate uh, level, and we have um, a single or a twin bedroom share uh, and all single gender uh, rooms. And there are all kinds of uh, facilities that are available our accommodations are fully equipped and furnished so um you would be uh, provided with a, a, a bedroom a, a bed a study table uh, your kitchen will be completely for, be equipped with utensils uh, there's going to be a fridge microwave oven everything that you need all you need to carry is your own individual uh, items and i think you're good to be settled our accommodation is priced at 5.5 to uh, 8.9 thousand per, uh, pounds per annum for 50 weeks. And in my opinion, these uh, accommodations are also inclusive of our utility uh, expenses, which are Wi-Fi, electricity, and water. So if you look at the uh, the bigger picture that you know you cut down on your expenses for transport and uh, other miscellaneous for accommodations and especially when it's on campus. With regards to scholarships, we have a range of scholarships. However, we've listed out only the most popular scholarships. Um, the International Future Leader Scholarship is an undergraduate scholarship, which is priced at six thousand pounds. This is offered only on the first year of uh, first year of the program. The rest, uh, postgraduate scholarships, they are very competitive and are based on the basis of merit. Now, the computer science scholarship is awarded to all Indian nationals automatically. There is no need to apply separately for this uh, scholarship. However, the other scholarships, which are mentioned over here and are also there on the website, need to be applied separately. So it can go as a part of the application, but with a different statement of purpose. So our scholarship page will have all the requirements as to what all are required to put in an application for it. So you all can go ahead and put in an application. The other part of the scholarship um, assess the scholarships and we do award scholarships uh, which are more than one in quantity. So if a student is eligible to be a recipient of two or more scholarships, 
you can combine them together and make it into a bigger amount. Um, that's a great thing that we offer. Students who are at the undergraduate level, the deadline for the scholarship is 9th of May and postgraduate deadline is 11th of July. And our results will be awarded on the 26th of July. So, um, if, and this deadline is not flexible as it is for the application deadline. So if you miss this deadline, it's missed. So <clears throat> this is the QR code, uh, code scanner for uh, more information regarding the scholarships. So if you all want, you all can take a scan of this. And this basically brings me to the end. So much for listening to me. And um, I think you can reach out to either Karan or me uh, if you all have questions and I'll be happy to answer them. All right, thank you, Nayarika. I think that was a very useful and informative. I just had one query before we go in the Q&A. You said the application deadline is 11 July for the, the master's courses. The scholarship deadline. The scholarship deadline, I see. The scholarship deadline is 11th of July. And the, uh, and that is for the postgraduate students. For the undergraduate students, it's 9th of May. Okay. And for which they need to be holding an unconditional offer or they simply that they've just made an application? They can go and ahead and... So applications, uh, if you're making an application, you can submit the scholarship statement of purpose at, as a part of the okay. uh, application. The results will be uh, declared on 26th of July. July, so, right. The students just have to be really patient, but they can right. do everything else. They can oh. accept the offer. They can, you know, go ahead with the CAS and everything. Right. But yeah. Right. Right. Wonderful. Let's just take some of the Q and A, which I think is going to the chat also. Uh, what are the requirements for MSc information security? And uh, can someone from a not non tech background can I apply? If you can indicate uh, your name. Uh, I can get you on the line. Otherwise, just very briefly, if you can indicate the requirements for MSc Information Security and the background yeah. for the degree for, for the degree. Okay, so basically, um, for the Information Security course, if you uh, if you come from a non cognitive background, what we have done is we have introduced a new program which is called the Masters of in uh, Cyber Security Project Management. Okay. Student can basically put in an application. Uh, we do not have like a background that we require as long as you have the uh, you have the entry requirement. We would require a first class, a sixty percent for academic level. We do not need IELTS. That was covered, and for just the information security program, um, we if you do not come from a Cognitive background, we would require an appropriate industrial experience. Okay. So in that case, you can go ahead and put in an application. Okay. So it's the MSc Cybersecurity Project Management, which is an alternative. Yes. Uh, and right. the best, the beauty of this program is that students from both technical and non-technical backgrounds can come. What they can do is they can merge uh, both the knowledge of both the technical right and the managerial side, and it becomes right. like, a, a, like I mean, these are uh, courses that are very popular these days. So um, right. the median salary for these programs are also after completing the courses are also right. on the higher side. Right. Uh, since we are on that, uh, which are the courses which have industrial placements? So uh, we- still available? Yes. So you, uh, so our computer science programs have the year in industry. So namely to say, in data science and analytics, the MSc in information security, the MSc in artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning. So these come with the year in industry. We do have a, a MSc in entrepreneurship and innovation, which comes with the business industry, uh, with the year in business industry. So students can opt for that additional year for the work experience. So it's a one year taught with a one year work internship. Yes. Um, and is that work internship typically have a stipend? They do. Yes. Okay. 
So our internships are usually paid and they are also assessed and graded by the university. So students are not only learning, but also kind of earning their, uh, right. you know, their rent or their expenses, whatever. So it's just like a boost to right. kind of, you know, move into the... Right. Right. I know in the past, this has been one of the most popular courses and close to 100% placement in industry. Um, For our computer science, science programs, our employability rate is really high. It stands right. at around 96%. It's right. also because of the location, you know, we are so closely located uh, near London and the Silicon Valley of England. Right. And there are so many companies that come by, uh, students get recruited in right. a blink of an eye. Right, right. Wonderful. I think on a related point, we have Gaurav who's inquiring, what is the tuition fee for MSDS and the management program? So they all range from program to program, but our uh, business programs are um, 20 pounds per year. And the data science and information security program uh, are at 26. Uh, if you opt for the year in industry, there is a 20% of the first year tuition fee. So the second year comes to around 5,240 pounds, but data science and analytics that come under the computer science program have that automatic scholarship of 4,000 pounds. So it's practically free for the students. Right. Ayush Nandi inquiring, what do we have to do for BTEC? Um, presumably entry requirements. Ayush, if you want to come online, we can do that. Um, so for the BTEC courses, number yeah. one, um, our applications have to go through UCAS and yeah. our two UCAS deadlines are uh, done with. However, um, till 30th of June, we will still accept applications, but then they will be moved into clearing. Okay. So uh, applications, these applications will be assessed by the university uh, itself. Um, we do have computer science engineering okay. students. Uh, so like, I mean, I can help you out if you are. Uh... Yeah, thank you for inquiring for this year's intake. Ayush, if you're looking for a particular program of merge it with the master's program and combine it into a integrated program. Right. Let's put it on the chat. Um, I guess this related, what are the presumably IELTS bands, which is the admission requirements for undergraduate degrees? So we have covered that, but perhaps you can just remind ourselves. So we do not need an IELTS uh, score as long as you have like 70% uh, in your 12 English. Um, alternatively, if you can uh, demonstrate that the medium of instruction in your uh, university or in your institution, your school, college, etc., have been in English, just go ahead and uh, submit that as a part of your application and we will ha be happy to kind of waive your English. Um, the idea is that if your English scores are really too low, just in case, if your scores are less than 70%, and you have submitted your MOI as well, but the university still requires an IELTS that would be just so that we know that you don't suffer while being taught. So go ahead and put in your application until the time the university does not specifically ask for an English test, don't worry about it. And in most circumstances, we do not ask for IELTS. Okay. Just going into the chat, uh, I have done MBA in finance. Can I consider another master's degree? I think that's, uh, I can just find the person, Akash Singh in Noida. Okay. So um, if you've already done your MBA program and if you'd like to kind of pursue another course, you are absolutely free to apply for another course. However, you may want to choose a more specialized, specialized. course. Yes. So if your interest is towards um, finance 
or say maybe marketing, we do have these standalone programs as well. Uh, there is the human resource management. We have an international uh, supply chain and logistics management. So, you know, these are certain courses that you can actually do after you finish your program, your MBA. So there will be no visa related, uh, you know, yeah, those uh, uh, scaries that you may have as long as it's completely uh, a specialized or something right. that is something yeah. not yeah, that. We, we have also seen that a lot of people at the same level, as long as it's a further specialized program, have been able to get both admissions and visas. That's not been a problem. Yes. I guess in a related a typical age for people who get onto the master's in business management. I know you mentioned there's no work experience requirement, right? Yes. But can I perhaps what is the typical age or median age of students getting onto the program? Do they also come on with WorkEx? Uh, yes. Or so, uh, but majority of our students uh, do have like about two years of work experience. Right. So a lot of them uh, want to kind of, after they finish their graduation, they want to kind of figure out where are their interests, especially if they are from India and they've done a BCom right. or a BBA they want to kind of generally move into a specialized area. So a lot of students carry work experience with them. So two right. years minimum work experience, but we've seen students who are 30 plus, 40 plus also who want to come and study. There are also students who are absolute freshers and just straight out of the university joining the university. Right, right. We have the kind of assistance and the support for all age groups so that they don't suffer at any point of time in the university. What's the typical cohort size since we're on that topic? I know management is obviously one of the most popular programs. It is among the popular programs. So our uh, classroom sizes would range from uh, about 50 to 100 students. Uh, but then depending on the kind of uh, specializations that students choose, the classroom sizes automatically become smaller. Right. And um, yeah, so like, I mean, it's, pretty engaging the entire lectures and the classrooms. So when we talk about uh, small size classrooms, it is really small so that students are able to kind of focus as well as the professors are able to kind of direct their energy to the students. Right, right. I guess Ramakrishna inquired deadline for UG. I think you did mention it's, I guess Ramakrishna, you know, indicated which course. Um, so for UG, um, the I think bio, biomed related. Or bio sciences. Either which ways are UG applications go via UCAS. Yeah. So those deadlines are done. Yeah. Now, if you still want to put in an application, you have a deadline till 30th of June uh, to okay. put in an application directly with the university. So the applications that we receive post, uh, like till 30th of June, will be sent to clearing. Right. Yeah. Okay. So when, so when you say direct, uh, the student can still apply via UCAS. To UCAS. the university, or just apply direct and then directly, route it and and then route it back via UCAS to accept the offer. It doesn't happen via UCAS for these students at all. So it comes directly to the university, okay. and then it is treated as an independent and a direct application okay. completely. Okay, so, so direct application. Yes. Right. I'm just seeing if they want to come online as I'm going through them, Ramakrishna. If you have anything further, you can come online. If I may just add while uh, we are searching through questions, sure. yeah. um, this is something that I kind of missed out and but it, it's really important. Yeah. Um, we do have a January intake for our business program. So students okay. who are looking for the January uh, intake or have not made it on time for the September intake can apply for our January campus uh, for a January intake. We will be sending out a flyer for all the courses that are okay. being taught. So our, so the confirmed ones so far are the Masters of uh, International Management and International Management and Marketing. We do have the Masters in Digital Marketing that we are offering. And we have the Masters of Cybersecurity Project Management. Okay. Uh, we are still coming to terms with the other courses and we are going to be making a flyer and we'll be sending it across to you. So it becomes easier for you to pitch those uh, courses for the intake as well. No computer science programs. We had them this year. 
However, we are just doing a January intake for business and management. The other thing is that we do not offer scholarships for the Jan intake at all. Okay. So students who have received a scholarship for the business and management for September intake, but are deferring their course to the Jan intake, we will be honoring those scholarships and okay. we will be providing it to them. However, as a, as a, as a new application for the Jan January intake, okay. no scholarships are provided. Okay. So this is just something that I wanted to put it out in the table. Right. I guess just on a related BTEC course, what is the tuition fee and some indication of scholarship which you mentioned? So uh, the total cost uh, is something that you can calculate. So yes. our one year tuition fees is going to be around 2100, 300 pounds. So multiply that. And especially if you have scholarships, uh, you can sh uh, cut down on your expenses. Right. But everything is available on the website and like depending on which BTEC pro course also that you're going for, like the engineering program, the tuition fees are uh, bound to kind of uh, vary, but it all comes under £22,000 uh, per year. Right. <clears throat> I guess application turnaround time, uh, if you can just give us an indication. And so, the entry requirements for, again, like MSc information systems, is it 2-2? Two, two? It is going to be a 2 is to 1, but one. if you okay. do come from a top tier university like Mumbai University or Delhi right. University or one of the, uh, the top tier universities, we would be happy to consider a 2 is to 2, but just be uh, uh, aware that then those students kind of lose out on their options of getting a scholarship. Mm -hmm. Scholarship start at a two is to one. Okay. And um, the entry requirements, we would expect a 60%, but right. we will consider. So uh, if students are coming from an engineering background, we do not look at the uh, backlogs uh, as long as the student has completed their course successfully. But having said that, we don't want like students with like around 10 mark sheets uh right. and taken around six to eight years to finish their graduation we would be then uh, that would kind of be a visa concern as well as the university concern but as long as the student has successfully completed the course in a in a reasonable duration of time we would be happy to consider we are right. very lenient that way right right so typically a four-year degree you may consider a 55 to a 60 percent yes if they have an engineering or related degree yes right I guess in terms of application turnaround time, typically three to four weeks, or is it lesser or more um, as, as, as we go down? We are trying to kind of uh, revamp our uh, application turnaround time. It currently stands at 25 to 30 days. Right. Um, we've come up with a whole new team with admissions, and we are aspiring to kind of come up with a, a quicker um, application status that is uh, made for students. So uh, stu like, I mean, if you don't hear back from us within 25 days, please write to me with the student ID and I'll be happy to kind of chase the university. Right. I guess just a few questions in terms of uh, MSc, HRM, is there any placements? Um, I do know obviously the GIR does offer a two year stay back anyway, but yes. is, is anything part of the MSA HRM? Not, uh, not really. Unfortunately, right. we do not have placement opportunities, but like uh, you said that we do have like the two years of GIR and we have right. a lot of hands-on experience. So my tip or my suggestion for uh, the students are, that please start looking for jobs. Please start updating your resume from the first or the second month. A lot of a lot of people actually say from the first quarter. Like I mean, just give yourself that time to kind of relax and adjust to the uh, new place and the environment. But I would say uh, it does take time to look for a job, whether you are in India or any part of the world. So if you are hanging by a thread, which is called the visa, please apply early. Uh, so that at least you have multiple options when it comes to applications in the job uh, in the job uh, 
uh, uh, side job front but you also give yourself that time you know so uh, apply as soon as possible take all the advantage and the services that the employability and the careers uh, services have to offer they do help you in creating a linkedin profile there are a lot of mock sessions available so that you can in so you can basically crack interviews as per the uk norms it's very different from what we have in india okay they very 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 uh, they have very uh, they have a set of questions that you know like i mean you all should be aware of there are certain terms and lingos that you should be made aware of so take full advantage of that um we do have a lot of invisible jobs so if you are a great performer in the university your teach your professors actually have like a lot of industrial connections and they have a lot of jobs these are invisible jobs they are not available on any portal so students if they are great if they are recognized by the professors many a times they are recommended by the professor itself right right, right. so plenty of opportunities right utilizing the network of career services and faculty and research fields which are available absolutely right yes ashma just inquired what are the courses available in biomed or forensic related uh masters yes. level right yes masters level biomedical uh, or forensic sciences related okay so we do have a uh, masters in forensic psychology but for that we would require you to have like a psychology background and your course has to be verified by the british psychological society um right. but if you're looking at biomedical science uh let me try to whip out right let's have a look so we do not have anything in biomedical but we do have biologic biological sciences which i'm not sure if you would be interested in Right. but if you are just uh, give me a shout out and this program is a a, a research based program so if that helps please let me know right. i think we'll encourage uh, ashma if you can give us your cv and we can check the appropriate related program yes let's put that in <clears throat> I think we've pretty much answered everything. Perhaps we can just wrap up. If there's anything further students want, they can just raise their hands. If, if not, any final comments? I know we've covered a lot, uh, both in terms of entry requirements, department scholarships, and deadlines. If there's anything will, you feel that, which I are, think I've covered most of it. Right. Uh, however, what I can do is I'm leaving my um, details in the chat box. for um students also if they'd like yeah. to get in touch with me call me sure. feel free to uh, let them know that i'm just a call or an email away i'm more accessible on emails because i generally have like a lot of uh, presentations or i do a lot of zoom calls with students also so ranveer if you have like yeah. students who would want to kind of meet me on a zoom call where Absolutely. you'd like to be a part of it as well sure. please uh, uh, i would be very happy if you could schedule one and we could basically sit through the profile of the student and go through right right just for the benefit of everyone the ucas applications are still open at deadline is 30 june application that de uh, ucas deadlines are oh, short oh, oh. but for the post graduate applications our deadline is 1st of june however right. this is not a hard deadline so applications after 1st of june also we are very happy to consider it right. you just need to give me a shout out saying nehar ka right. this application has gone through so if you could prioritize this except we can do direct applications for the undergraduate program uh, undergraduate programs yes we, but they will not go is, via ucas right that's okay as long as they go direct we can then yes. get them admission accordingly so for that the deadline is 30th of june 30th of june right 30th of june okay and the scholarship deadline you mentioned yes. just for a quick re recap was in may uh so for the undergraduate scholarship yes. deadline yes. is 9th of may 9th may okay and post graduate scholarship deadline is 11th of july the results for both the application uh, for both the scholarships are 26th of 26th july, july. Yeah. approximately we have two months uh, where students are still keen we continue to get a lot of inquiries yes uh, for royal holloway both for law management business 
some of the CSDS uh, and MSBA programs are obviously very popular too. Yeah. All right. I think on that note, I think we've pretty much covered everything and uh, thank you for your time, Niharika. And thank thank you, you for having me. Thank you, everyone. Do get in touch with us. I've posted uh, our email and our website, info at combinedco and combinedco.com. Yeah. And um, we shall follow up with the students with their profiles and for the interaction we have kindly offered for any one-on-one -on -one Zooms. I think that'll be useful also. Thank you so much for uh, conducting this session. Um, I had a good time. I hope it was an informative session for everyone over here as well. Absolutely. Thank you again, Naraka. Thank you so much. And we see you. Yeah, see you. Bye. Bye.